It's December. Yes, Netflix is big. Ooh, that's a streaming service, right? That's true. A lot of stuff coming to Netflix in the month of December. A little later in the show, the top four things we are most excited about coming to Netflix. Mostly movies, also a TV show. If you haven't seen these things, probably going to want to put it on your watch list. Yeah, if you miss them, you'll be a nerd. Like us. We just sick burning ourselves right there. I don't like that. I guess it's time to start the show. Welcome to December. Yes. Can you birthday believe Birthday month. Oh, that's right. Your birthday is this my month. My daughter and, uh, yeah, I'm in there too. But my, my, daughter. my daughter as well. Oh, that's right. Lexi's birthday is tomorrow. I, I don't want to hear about it. You know how old she'll be. I don't want to hear about it. 31. It seems like yesterday she was, what, two and correcting my grammar. True story. Quick aside. So we, <laughs> we moved to San Diego. Lexi is two. Maybe not even quite two. I don't think she turned two yet, which is... Crazy. She was. But you were carrying her into the Lion King premiere. Yeah. Lion King came out, and we're, we moved to San Diego, and we're going together. We pick up Chris, give him a ride, and she's in her car seat in the back, and we're going, and we, we're in a conversation, and then Chris says something about going to the movies. She goes, "Where are we going?" Yeah, we're, and we're going to the movies. You know how you normal people you say, "Oh, we're going to go to the movies tonight," and she goes, "Chris, we're going to see a movie, not movies." It's Tony's kid. I mean. There's no question. Damn, that's cold. 18 months old, correcting a grown man's grammar. But here's the best part, and here's where she's like her mother. <laughs> what do I want to talk ah. about? So 30 minutes later, we're off the subject. We're doing our thing. Everything's going great. And out of nowhere, there's no segue. There's no reason she should do this. But she goes, hey, Daddy, remember that time Chris said movies instead of movie? I'm like, oh, coming back and rub it in your face for no reason. Yeah, hated that kid ever since. They've just, they've not gotten along. He hasn't, Never liked he hasn't spoken to her in 29 years. <laughs> not true. Anyway, happy birthday to all December birthdays. But as we you know get into December, you know, a big debate every year is when do you decorate? If you, if you celebrate Christmas, Christmas is like, well, it's kind of ambiguous. When do we put up our Christmas decorations? Have you guys started decorating? Uh, the, the girls have, yes. Usually the way this works is because me, this is a, a, a tough area for us. Okay. <laughs> I'm a task guy. Give me a list. I'll check the boxes. Get it done. <laughs> they want to have the experience day. Like, let's put the music on, light candles, and we're going to have fun and do this. And I'm the whole time thinking this could be getting done so much quicker. Yeah. So what what it's turned into is they make me a, a nice drink of some sort, and I sit on the couch and watch what they're doing, and then they sing and listen to music and do it. But you're part of the experience. But I'm there. That's great. And that's good. That that works. You guys have found a way yes. to make it work. And I get that because it's an experience for us. Katie and I both were raised in families where, you know, it was a big deal. You know, putting up Christmas decorations is big. Now, I will say the, the most vivid memories I have of Christmas decorating are my mother and father who were lovely and were married for a very long time. But every year a fight did come out <laughs> because somebody sat behind and judged the other person's whatever they were doing. So I, I wouldn't put that there. I wouldn't put that there. And I'm not going to you know, say one sex over the other for this. But let me just tell you, in any relationship, it's always best to have the person not doing anything stand behind and tell the other person how to do it. it they love it. What could go wrong? When is that ever a bad thing? In any relationship. Try it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sample that. Let us know how it works. Yeah, the put comments. it in the comments. Please, come back and make a comment. We put our tree up the day after Thanksgiving, as we always do. Lexi mm -hmm. was here, our oldest, and it was a great night. She didn't do, she kind of sat there and, and gave some direction. Katie and I went back and forth, and no fights were had. Okay. Which is great. And we still have a lot of decorating to do with the house. And the outside is my least favorite part because I want it to look nice from the outside, but I really don't want to do any of the work that goes into it. And I thought about hiring one of those places that comes out and does it, but they charge this crazy amount. I don't know that. So kind you of... should just do like our old radio station where they just have the tree decorated and they just put it behind one of those I don't even things. Mind. I see my things. I don't even mind the tree. The tree's fun. The tree is part of our thing. We put on Christmas records and do that. It's the outside, the lights on the house. Oh, yeah. And the outside decor. I'm just like, man, I don't care if the neighbors think I have the spirit or not. Screw them. Yeah. Uh, this is just about what, what, what I'm feeling inside. You've never liked your neighbors anyway. I am, I'm outvoted in that area, so. 
We'll be putting some lights up, I guess. Good for you. At some point. Uh, but on the subject of December, and as we get into things, you know, it's a big holiday movie time, and usually this is when Oscar bait, as they call it, yes. starts getting released. The, the Steven Spielberg movie bombed. That was supposed to be big Oscar bait. I know. Imagine that. Nobody cared to see Steven Spielberg's childhood. Well, that, I mean, at the end of the day, he's just a nerdy kid who liked to make movies. Yeah. I, mean, I love Judd Hirsch. I was I want to see it just to see they Judd Hirsch. They say he's going to get an Oscar for it. I, I hope so. When it, when it streams, I will probably watch it. But at the end of the day, I mean, who wants to sign up to watch Steven Spielberg's home movies, which is basically what this is. Yeah, and if I was going to see Judd Hirsch in anything, it's going to be Dear John. Sure. Be right behind Taxi. No. No, no instead of Taxi. Yes. <laughs> The crazy thing about Dear John, side note, 80s show, I watched that show a couple of times. It wasn't my thing. And I, and You're I, the one. And I let it go away. And then Justified came out on FX, and one of my, maybe my favorite character, my at least second favorite character on that show, Win Duffy, Katie and I were watching, I was like, hey, that's the guy from Dear John. Yeah, he's in everything. He was on Burn Notice, and he always plays a creepy dude on everything. Yeah, I think he's typecast. He seems kind of a creep in real life. Anyway... I get it. Judd Hirsch is great, so we'll end, end up seeing that movie. But so Will Smith is his new movie, and this was this was before the whole Oscar slap from last year. Mm-hmm. This was going to be his next big thing. Emancipation is the name of it. To be honest, if I'm, I, I can't even speak on anything about this movie. I haven't even watched the trailer yet. Although I'm, a, I like Will Smith. I'm a fan of his movies, except for the ones where he forces us to watch his kids. I don't care about seeing his kids in movies. But he is still facing some serious backlash from slapping Chris Rock at the Oscars. When someone that's portrayed as super nice and then it comes out that they're not, yeah, it's tough to come. Ellen, Rosie O'Donnell, uh, James Corden now is getting it. They're the oh, they're super nice. That's why they're such a good talk show host. And then it comes out they're all terrible. I, I got news for you. Nobody's that nice. Nobody. Mm-hmm. I don't care who it is. Everybody has their dark secrets. We all do the best we can to bury them deep, tamp mm-hmm. them down, and that's of course what makes at us- least eight feet. Yeah, all kinds of problems. But with Mil- with Will Smith, he was on The Daily Show a couple nights ago with Trevor Noah. And, of course, obviously they talked about this. And he he tried to brush it off with humor a little bit. And then he, he you know, he, he cried a little bit. And, of course, with any actor mm-hmm. doing these things, you wonder how much of this is real, how much of this is acting. But he made a comment. He said, hey, look, I get it. If people aren't ready to see me in a movie yet because of that, I totally understand. I respect that. But I guess my question is... And look, I didn't like what happened. I thought that was crazy. I think that's a man who is ruled by a woman who has just latched onto his fame, just my opinion. I got nothing against her personally, except I think she saw a, a very wealthy, successful man. What has she really done? Well, I agreed. I but agree with famous. all this. But my issue is not with Will as much. I mean, Will should have been punished. My issue was with the Oscars. Yeah, They didn't call the cops. They didn't kick him out. And then everybody gave him an ovation later when he won. It was it was a mess. It was and a we, weird deal. Of course, we could talk about that for a while. And I, I mean, I'm a I'm a Chris Rock fan. I'm a Will Smith fan. So that was hard to see. So Will on the show the other night talked about that. You know, he, I guess he had had a lot of suppressed anger and feelings, mm-hmm. and it all just came out in that moment. What I saw, I don't know what you saw. I saw a man who kind of laughed at the beginning of that joke, and then had a wife who didn't find it funny at all and wanted him to do something, and so he acted out and. That may not be what happened at all, just what it looked like to me. I guess the thing that bugs me the most is I believe Will Smith should be punished for what he did, however that may be. He did assault a man on stage, on television. But what about all these other people? And some of them, I'm, I'm a big, I mean, I am a huge Brad Pitt fan. I love Brad Pitt. But there are a lot of disturbing allegations about him and how he treated his kids. Yeah. And that just kind of went away. It just kind of oh, you're talking brushed. about, well, I mean, let's be honest. I mean, Harvey Weinstein's the best example of this. Yes. We are not in the movie business, and we have some friends that are, but I mean, even in the 90s, when we were in San Diego, we would hear rumors of this Harvey Weinstein guy and the things he does. We heard stories about Bill Cosby in the 90s, and we're like, no way. And then I remember watching 30 Rock, and Tracy Morgan made a joke about Cosby and his aunt and what he did with the drink and all this stuff, and I was like, whoa. And now it's all out. People know. And I mean, we can use country music as an example. I won't name names because it'll kill us in the industry. Name some names. Well, it'll kill us. This is why it stays quiet. We're already dead. Name some names. (laughs) This is why it stays quiet. We know some country artists that, I'm I'm not saying they drug people or anything like that, but there's country artists out there that cheat and they tell their crew, you cover for me or you're out of a job. And when you've got a mortgage and a family back home, you do what you're told. And not to cause a whole thing here. I don't know about the female artists as much, but with male artists, you'd be lucky to find one who didn't act that way. Yeah. And there are some who don't. 
Look for the artists who take their wives on the road with them, and they're not doing it. John Barry and Chris Stapleton, I love those guys, and they both said the same Josh thing. Josh Turner. Josh Turner, three of them, said, you know what? Wife's on the road with me. I can't get in trouble. Yep. I just thought that was great. Respected that. And it's sad that it, that happens, but that's a whole thing. And then, so then, just spinning off to one more thing, and I know this is kind of a, a serious and heavy start, but if you've seen that Casey Anthony has a documentary on Peacock, she's getting time to tell her twisted, wrong, fictional well, story. She had time. She had a trial to tell this story and then didn't. And now she's coming back and saying it was her dad that did all this stuff. And even the judge has come forward and said, None of this. Well, the fact that Buying she walked away it. from that thing and didn't end up in prison, I mean, I get it. Justice system, it is what it is. But are you kidding me? I mean, if you jump on any social media, people talking about this situation and the fact that she's getting time and making money. I guess there are instances where people are innocent and they and everybody wants to accuse them of being guilty. I mean, OJ, for instance. Oh, well, wait a minute. <laughs> Maybe a bad example. <laughs> yeah. Try something different. <laughs> Is there really anybody left in the world who thinks he didn't do it? I No. If Everybody knows he did it. Come on. OJ, come on the show. Tell us why you're innocent and how that search is going for the real killers. I could never. I couldn't keep a straight face two seconds well, into that interview. In San Diego, true story. One of our competitors paid five grand to have him on the show. His people called us and said, for $5,000, he will come on your show. And we're like, we're not paying for him to come on our show. I, we're not going to pay a guy who murdered his wife. Yeah, we're not going to tell us he money. didn't murder his wife. What are you talking about? All right. Can we spend to something more positive? Yes, please. Here's something that is a feel good. Get ready to put all those feelings aside. Saw this story blown away. Imagine you are a parent and you've got a baby and your baby's young, a year old, maybe two years old, and the baby is kidnapped. Oh, I thought you said this was a feel good. No, no, wait. Devastating. You can't even imagine. And then time goes on. 10 years go by, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. And you just assume, I'm, we're never going to see our child again. We don't know what happened to her. Well, here's a story that can re maybe restore your faith that some good things can happen. Texas family, 51 years after their child was kidnapped, they have been reunited through 23andMe. Wow. Are you kidding so, like, me? So what happened to the, the baby just got kidnapped? Fort Worth, Texas. Their baby was kidnapped when she was 22 months old, Melissa, 1971, allegedly abducted by a woman who was hired to babysit her. Oh, wow. And this woman raised her. They lived basically in the same place, Fort Worth, for much of their life. She had no idea her family was searching for her. She had no idea that she was missing, that she had been kidnapped. And then they reached out to her on Facebook. And at first, she thought it was a scam. She said, my father texted me on Messenger, and he told me, you know, I've been looking for my daughter for 51 years. They found her through a DNA match with one of her children on 23andMe. And the person that raised me, she said, I asked her, is there anything you need to tell me? And it was confirmed that she knew that I was baby Melissa, who had been kidnapped, and that just made it real. And wow. parents reunited with her for the first time just, I think, last weekend. And they did further official and legal DNA testing and... It's all done, and she's back, and she is an adult now, of course. I don't know how I'd feel about that because, I mean, to me, now all I would focus on is the negative. I'd be like, I've missed all that time with you. Well, I, did, I, missed, I, mean, sir, I mean, you obviously, you missed raising a child. You missed her, every, every milestone that she has Every had. bonding moment. But I guess you have to look at it as like, hey, look, we're all still alive. We were yeah. lucky enough to be alive, and you were found, and we are back together, and you make the most of every second that you can. Is the... the Kidnapper going to jail? or That's a great question. The criminal statute of limitations expired 20 years after her 18th birthday. Oh, wow. Which is crazy to think that this woman is going to get away with this, but the department said they would continue to investigate to try to uncover all the in available information concerning the abduction. This happened so long ago, wow. this woman probably just got free. I don't know if I could ever contain my anger over that. I guess you'd, you'd be so overjoyed that you had your child back at whatever age, you would yeah. just make that happened but what a crazy story so kind of a happy ending i, I, I was gonna say i thought you were saying we we're going to a feel good well, i thought that was feel good because i mean reunited after all mm -hmm. this time and okay it's it's moving toward feel good i wouldn't call that feel good i don't think i care for your judgment <laughs> or your tone well that's, that's me fine what are we into right now <laughs> We've been watching a few things at our house. We have a few things on the list. We are going to watch The White Lotus. We talked about that last episode. But we're all about, apparently, sins right now. We just finished season four of The Sinner. Yeah, you keep trying to get me on that, and I just can't buy in. And you know I like Jessica Biel. Well, she's only in the first season. Oh, okay. Season one, Jessica Biel was in it, and Katie watched the first 20 minutes, and then something happened that she was like, i got to show this to Tony. She showed it to me, and at the same moment, she was 
I was like, okay, I have to know what happened. It is, it's not a fast paced show. It's not a like, ooh, popping thriller. Uh, it's methodical. But that first season completely roped me in, and I had to find out what was going on. And they give you, of course, as a good show will, little pieces at a time. And then they introduced a character played by Bill Pullman. Yes, Independence Day. A great actor, great character actor. For me, this may be the best thing he's ever done. Because really? it's, not, it's not just a throwaway character. Like, he usually plays the romantic interest, yeah. you know. And he's While all, you were sleeping type thing. Yes. This is a heavy character with a lot of baggage and a lot of backstory. And he lives in the skin. And each season, he's gotten better and better. Hmm. And he's fascinating to watch. I will say second season, for me, hmm. But season three and the season we just finished, season four, were remarkable. It's going to blow you away real quick if you didn't know this already. His son, Bob. From Maverick. Runs in the family. I highly recommend The Center. If you if you don't mind it being a little methodical, I would recommend you, again, give it another try. Try to hang in there mm-hmm. to at least get some more Bill Pullman because his character is just killer. And then the other Sin thing we just watched, and it's, this is three episodes. Do you remember about... Probably. I don't know, three or four years ago, because we, we, we followed the story on the news because we were doing our thing. This crazy story about this woman and the guy that she was with and two kids disappeared and they wouldn't answer where the kids were. And then they... they oh, they, yes, yes, yes. They, yes. they, they went, went to, to, like, vacation. They went and... to Hawaii and stuff, and they finally... Okay, there is now a three-part docuseries on Netflix called The Sins of Our Mother. And her oldest son is is the focus of this. He tells a lot of the story, but there's everybody that was involved is in this. This is such a dark episode. But if you follow that story kind of in the news, and you, if, you, if you're going, I, I remember that story. Yeah, the, the, they, the, the kids were disappeared, and they went to hell... The background of this story, the details of this story, why she did what she did and how it all came together is absolutely crazy. And I'll just say this, with Under the Banner of Heaven coming out a few months ago and it being such a big thing, it's not a good time for the Mormons. <laughs> this is another, not in, a, in, in exactly that way, but it's definitely involved and it's definitely a religious background that causes these things to happen. I was watching this, and I was infuriated, and I was blown away. I'm over this, man. This whole episode's been so dark. I wanted to have just like a misunderstanding at the Regal Beagle. You got to hang in. Mr. Oh, okay. Mr. Furley hasn't even popped in yet. Okay. For anybody who's 60 and older. Uh, anyway, Sins of Our Mother, three episodes. It's a crazy story. It's true. It is sad. The story is really not over yet because the trial is yet to happen. But, man, it's worth watching. Oh, Here's something light. Christmas time is here. That's true. If, if you enjoy sweets, like Katie's addicted to C's candy. She loves C's candy. That's mm-hmm. a California company. I'm from Ohio. This is something I'm very into at this time of year. Esther Price candies. You can find them online. Esther Price sounds like a librarian from your high school. That's what she looks like. The original Esther. If you when you see her picture, okay. This is this is it. They kept the company going for a long, long time. Incredible, delicious treats. I love the candy. I think it's some of the best chocolate out there. If you are a fan of sweet and salty, their chocolate covered potato chips. You can't beat him. You can't okay. beat him. So EsterPrice.com, we made nothing for that. That's not a paid promotion. That's just something I love every time this time of year comes around. Sweet and Salty is the title of my third album. <laughs> All right. You had a couple of things going too. <laughs> yes. Like you said, Christmas time. Every year we've made a deal. We each get to pick two movies that we watch before Christmas. Nice. And we got Family Man out of the way the other night. That's Rachel's favorite. Yes, that's her favorite. Nicolas Cage, Tay Leone. It's fun movie. It's Scrooge. Everybody does a version of Scrooge. That's Family Man's version. And I see so much of myself in that character. <laughs> that but Nicolas Cage being Nicolas Cage when he gets all mad and does his stuff. Yeah. I like it. If you haven't seen it, it's cute. Say what you want about him. We just, well, Lexi was visiting for Thanksgiving. We showed her uh, The Unbearable Weight of Massive yes, Talent. Yes, love that movie. If you haven't seen that, Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent with Nicolas Cage, a man who is absolutely okay with himself, making fun of himself, Fantastic movie, too. Yes. And then the other thing, you've been on like a political movie kick. I don't know why, but I've watched Vice, which was about Cheney, Mm -hmm. and then I watched W right after that. Both unnecessary. (laughs) Okay. I mean, neither one of them broke a, you know, ground. Like JFK, that movie, when you watched it, you're like, oh my goodness. Like, did this really happen? Is this something that's going on? You know, and this and that. Both these movies, I'm like... Yeah, we all know this. Yeah, there's no conspiracy. He wasn't that bright, and he ran the show. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like a great guy that I'd want to party with or oh, hang with. But yeah. And, I mean, we've heard a couple of stories about him, too, that some folks that hung out with him. Oh, like, as a person, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah and But I'm like, 
Yeah. Okay. Cheney's weird and kind of an (laughs) a-hole, but you know, I mean, there's nothing in there. I was just, don't waste your time. If you haven't seen those 10 year old movies. (laughs) Okay, fine. I'm a big Frost Nixon guy myself. Oh, wow. This has nothing to do with anything. This is an episode of downers and weird segues. Let's talk about smoke. Okay. Fire pits going the other day. And this is honest to goodness question. And I just haven't Googled it because I'm lazy. Does smoke follow like the heat of a body or something? Because no matter which side I get on the fire pit, the smoke goes right to my face. And I mean, the wind can be blowing hard in the other direction. And I'll go, well, I'm going to go to this side so that I'm not in the smoke. And by the time I get to the other side, it's in my face. Wherever you move, the smoke follows. Yes. Same thing. We have a charcoal grill. And I have, I've done a dance around that grill over and over again. So, well, the wind's blowing this way. I'll stand over here. Next thing you know, the, there's the smoke. Anybody has the answer to that, we'd like to know. There's probably some science there. You'll find that we have a lot of questions, but we're way too lazy to just get on Google. Yeah. We're counting on you. That's just too much. Uh, Oh, so we told you we were going to tell you our top four things that we were excited about coming to Netflix. Yes. Let's jump into that real quick. December is here. What can you look forward to? Now, there's a lot of things coming. There's a lot of new seasons of shows that you probably know and love. There's some, you're always going to get those B movies, what have you, a lot of originals. I saw a trailer. I don't, I think this is coming in December. I believe it is, it's Asian and it's dubbed. But it's like four, I'm out. four assassins come together to do something, and the, the action looks incredible. I'll wait for the American version. Well, you can change the subtitles. You can just get it American dubbed. I don't want American dubbed. I want to see the real thing, because that just makes me think of the well, Godzilla. The real thing. Well, what's the real thing? That just makes me think of the Godzilla shows I used to watch when I'd come home from school, and okay. I'd be like, their lips aren't even matching up with this. Okay. So you're in. I'm out. Fair enough. Anyway. Our top four things, things we're excited about, and we want to hear what you're excited about. Please, what is something you are looking forward to coming up on Netflix or yeah, any streaming service? But for us, uh, a big one is the new Glass Onion Knives Out Mystery. Can't wait to see it. Rach and I, the other night, I was so not upset, but we were just all hurt <laughs> because Rachel saw a thing and said, oh, Knives Out is out today. So we cooked dinner. I got me a mystery-solving bourbon. And like I've talked about before, we have an issue at our house where we pause movies a lot. <laughs> and it drives me crazy because I like to just get lost in a movie. You get immersed. Yeah, and, and I get sunk into it, and I'm like, I'm going to solve this mystery. And so I may even made the deal, like, I'm getting my mystery bourbon. I want to sit down. I want to solve this movie. So can we all promise not to pause it a lot? And everybody's like, we're in. We're excited, and we're all sitting down to watch it. And then we can't find it. And then we realize, oh, it's in theaters. Yeah. For a week. Then it's coming to streaming. Yeah, I think it's actually streaming. I want to say the 23rd, so near the end of this yeah. month. But. So it was a good dry run. <laughs> now you're ready, though. So we are ready. Fantastic. So that's coming if you like the first one. The first one I thought was excellent. Yes. Just a lot of fun. If you are a fan of Guillermo del Toro, and I am, his movies sometimes, and they're a little weird, but I really enjoy them. But his version of Pinocchio, I have heard nothing but great things. And the, the shots I've seen of this, the trailer, it's stunning mm-hmm. visually. So that's going to be out uh, on Netflix this This is month. the dark one where he ends up in a wood chipper, right? <laughs> It's a combination of Fargo and Pinocchio. Yeah, yeah. I don't think. I don't think. Oh, okay. I, I'd watch that movie. Something else coming to Netflix: the new season of Emily in Paris. Now, full disclosure, I don't know anything about this show. I haven't watched this show. Mm-hmm. I just know it is buzzworthy, and people love talking about it. Oh, let me just tell you, Emmanuel in Paris was a movie well, that you. No, it's Emily in Paris. Oh, I don't know anything about that. Totally separate thing. Okay. I've seen that. Yeah, I was a kid. That, that series of I've 60 seen, movies. I've seen blurred parts of it on Cinemax. I've seen scrambled versions of that for years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. And then uh, we've already seen it a couple of times, but we loved it so much. And if you've been waiting to not have to pay a rental fee and you have Netflix, Bullet Train. Oh, yes. Netflix. And I don't know the character's name in it, but the guy from Kick-Ass. A, a lemon, I think. Or either Orange or Lemon. They're saying he's the front runner to be the new James Bond. And I think he'd be great. Great movie. A lot of fun. Just quick moving. Uh, some of you might consider captions because there's a, th- a lot of thick British accents in there. Yeah, I, I followed it, and I'm an idiot. I can't follow accents. I got terrible hearing, but I followed it. Well, that really should be all you need to know. Yeah. Okay, and as we get near the end here, let's talk about some internet <laughs> that made us laugh this week. <laughs> let's jump into a, a holiday-themed meme. I love this. I'm beginning to think Hallmark might have a formula for their Christmas movie posters. What? I mean, look at that. Every guy... Or every girl in green, the other in red, standing next to each other. You can't tell the difference. Well, they all film on the same lots. Like all the Hallmark, it was either Hallmark or Lifestyle. Somebody, they built like these airport hangars. They built little cities inside them that are permanently decorated for Christmas. And they film a movie and then they leave and then the set decorators come in and change the store names. 
and then they shoot from different angles, but it's the same streets. It's the same everything. I think that's fair because they're all the same story. Yes. So why not use the same sets? Exactly. There was something Rachel had one on the other day and I walked through and I'm like, are they just doing the, and it was a movie I've seen before. And I'm like, they're just doing a new version of that, but they've put a Christmas theme on it. Hey, kudos to them. Because they make a bunch of money and people yes. watch these movies. Yes, they do. How you sit through them, I do not know. On that subject, though, love this tweet. I fell asleep halfway into a Hallmark holiday movie, then woke up halfway through another. It took me 30 minutes to notice. <laughs> That's the thing. It's yeah. all the same. And I love seeing some of these old actors. When I, uh, Honest to goodness, I don't watch them. I would tell you if I did. I would be embarrassed, but I'd tell you. But like, I flipped on the other night, and I'm like, who is that old guy? Because Rachel had, had it on the channel, and I'm looking at it, and I'm like... That's Gonzo from Trapper John, MD. Wow. I guess they figure nobody's going to know this. Who would remember him from 40 years ago? Everybody knows Gonzo from Trapper John, MD. <laughs> uh, on the subject of the Hallmark movies, though, we should... Oh, try I was really hoping you were going to go on the subject of <laughs> Trapper John, MD. Speaking of Trapper John, MD. <laughs> no, we have for years thrown out the drinking game that goes with Hallmark movies. Yes. Now we have this show, this... YouTube channel, ah. I think it's a fine opportunity for us to actually live stream us playing the drinking game during a Hallmark movie. Yes, but only if we can get four or five people that want to play along with us that we could bring up on the screen somehow. Who wants to get hammered? That's, that's what's going to happen. <laughs> that sounds good to you. It's a, a good holiday hammering. <laughs> yes. I'm just biting my tongue. I love this meme. Couple had three sets of twins and a little girl. Lovely picture, very cute kids. But then the comment under it is my favorite part. One day some dude is going to do this girl wrong and get the most confusing beating of his life. That's true. <laughs> it's like, hey, what, what? am I in the Matrix? <laughs> Why am I getting doubled up on? <laughs> like, you're the same dude. Why are you both beating me up? <laughs> Next up, love this tweet. And if you're an animal lover, it's 100%. The best thing about dogs is you can act like something really good just happened and they'll instantly start celebrating too. They have no idea what the context is. They're just all us ready to party no matter what. That's so true. It's like when we leave, I guarantee you, if Bailey had a cell phone, I would have 400 missed calls within 10 minutes. Well, she would be like Buddy the Elf and Elf. Hey, hey, Dad. Hey, yep, Dad. Oh. exactly. And speaking of that, see what I did? I'm, I'm segueing. Nice. It's a smooth segue. Well played. Love Your this 30 meme. years of radio paid off. You got that right. Here we go. Me sitting at the kids' table to talk video games instead of politics. Just a couple more quick ones here. At the gym, I said subscription instead of membership, and the girl replied with, LOL, this isn't a pharmacy. <laughs> Bitch, that's a prescription. We're both stupid. <laughs> I feel like my wife Katie wrote that because that just... That sounds like something she would say. It sounds like her. And then the last thing here, I love this, the police department review. You're going to love this review. They were very gentle when they handcuffed me. And their patrol vehicles are incredibly roomy. Overall, very professional. We'll get arrested by them again for sure. <laughs> I do like that. That's the kind of thing that, that I would have done yes. and my mom would have hated it. Like, son... <laughs> Please, why are you doing this? All right, that's the show for today. I'm sorry it started off kind of dark. Yeah, it was very dark. But hopefully it was still interesting. Glad you're here. Please like the video. Share the video if you have things in here that you really enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that little subscription button. And make sure you come back over and over again. And we're in the holiday season, so yell at people that don't watch it. Ooh, that's a good Ask them, and then when they say they haven't seen it, yell at them. Yes. They say, I've never heard of these people. I don't care who these people are. Then it's your job to stand up for us. Go caring on them. Have a great one. We'll see you next time.